So this is our uh, this is our villa. Here's our living room. There is my wife. Hi, I'm a mess. Don't She's judge hot. Me. Our dining room. And our kitchen, complete with a uh, water jug. A refrigerator that, quite frankly, looks nicer than the one I have at home. The bathroom. Look at that. Attention to detail, man. I love it. High vaulted ceilings everywhere. All right. Once again, this is our first, first full day in Belize. And apparently in Belize, maybe because it was a British colony, I don't know, chess is really a big deal. And by big deal, I mean a big deal. So Lee and I set up the chess run at a golf cart. Hi. And she is going to be my navigator slash cameraman. Here we go. Okay. We're driving. Here We're we driving. go. We figured out how to start it. There's no seatbelts. I just reached for a seatbelt. Yeah. They're no seatbelts. <laughs> Here we go. There's our resort. Dubai Resort. Alright, we're officially checking it out, baby. On the road. I assume speed limits aren't a big deal around here because there is no speedometer. You can only go so fast. I've got it to the metal. Metal, metal to the metal right now. I hope we're on the right side of the road. Me too. Ooh, check this place out. Is that what's under construction right now? No, nope, that's, that's the way it's supposed to look. <laughs> right here all vehicles must stop Hello? this is where we pay the toll okay do you have the cash how much 
five dollars in there or two fifty. Here, hold on. Don't let the mat fly away. I'm not. for the round trip. Round trip, huh? Round trip. All right. All right, we're sticking it in here. Oh. Watch your head. Now we're in the real action, baby. Oh, the lazy chicken. He said stay on the street oh. until he gets a roundabout. Can't see colors, I get it. That was sexist. Sexist, Max, whatever you want to say. It's three o'clock in the morning. Technically day two, full day two. And we're getting a nice rainstorm. We went to bed uh, about 11 o'clock. And I woke up to the rain and the lightning and the thunder. And it looks like, looks like I didn't get my camera fast enough. Might have missed the lightning show. Going down the slide. I love you. Okay. You're making me do this. I feel guilty. Oh, you should. <laughs> go baby, go! Love you! Do it! Beautiful. <laughs> Held your nose and 
There's two roads. I think this one will go this way. My secret deli. Oh, I wonder if we're headed toward my secret beach. No, secret beach is over on the other side of the bridge. Sure. I'm positive. I looked at the map. Pedro Belize. And our waiter is Juan. Great guy. I don't think I can see us. Oh, it's still wide in the lens. my boobs. Sorry. Um, these are homemade stuff, right? So I'm going to give you guys a little warning on it. <coughs> Please be careful with it. <coughs> this one's the hottest one? Yeah, that's pure habaneros. Just blend a little touch of salt and pepper. Then the other one is both onions and habaneros. We put some lime juice. A little okay. touch of salt. That one goes perfect with the rice. Awesome. Thank Let's you. Thanks for out there. Yeah, she's Habanero sauce is hot. He wasn't kidding. El Falgón. What's your name? James. James. Yes, sir. I'm John. John nice to Pleasure meet you. to meet you. Who's the cook? What's your name? Fred. 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 Yeah. Fred. I'm documenting this whole thing. It's all going on YouTube. All right. And we already know this is Juan. <laughs> 
How long have you worked at El Fuego? I have about eight to nine months right here right now. Okay. What did I mean, you do before? I used to be a sous chef at Captain Morgan's. Did that for about eight years. How was that? Uh, pretty good. Got a little bit tired. Did chef. you cook our meal tonight? No, actually, it's the chef in which we have in the You like to call it? Can I meet him? No. She's a lady. Sh oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sh yeah. Her? Hi. You guys probably think I'm a crazy American, don't you? It's all good, buddy. Yeah, my wife and I went to. Yeah, my wife and I went to Antigua six months ago. So we're looking. We're on a mission to find out where we're going to retire. So we're getting a 55-foot sailboat. We're going to live on that sailboat, and we need to find a place where we want to park our sailboat. Yeah. 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 So we, we're looking at Belize yeah. now. You like it now? Oh, like I love the it? island. I love the island. But see, when I went on the internet, I couldn't find anything really about harbors or places to park oh, my boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we figured, well, let's just let's go to San Pedro. It'll be great. That's your right. Hi. You are amazing. Give me a high five. What's your name? Luz. Luz. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so Thank much. You. Now, he warned me about the homemade habanero sauce. Did you make that? Yeah, we did. But the, that sauce in the morning shift made it. Okay, well, it was, it was hot. I grew up on the border of Mexico in El Paso, Texas. El Paso. Yeah, so I, I lived in Juarez, Mexico. You and, know about chili and hot sauce, right? Well, I thought I did. I thought I did. <laughs> I thought I did. And, and Juan comes out and he warns me about the habanero sauce. And he says, this is, okay, so this is really hot. And I thought, bad. But I was polite. And I said, oh, okay, whatever. And I poured it all over my rice because he said it was good with the rice. So I'm mixing it in my rice. I'm like, man, this is going to be good. Got some rice, got some shrimp, got some onion, some pepper. Man, whew, lit me up. But it was good. It was good. So our, uh, we're staying at, uh, uh, what is it, Coco Beach? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're staying at the Coco Beach. We've got a villa there. And the first thing we did was ask everybody at Coco Beach, where would you go to eat? Where's the best place to get Belizean food? Some good Belizean food. Every one of them, first choice, all fucking right here. So right. here we are. But you guys are, you guys have been great. Thank you for letting me record you. I just, you guys are amazing. So I'd like to document the people we meet. You know, um, good stuff, good stuff. My wife is still eating. She, she gets pissed off when I eat too fast because she's like, I look like a pig because I'm still eating by myself. <laughs> She just eats slow, and she's laughing at me right now. <laughs> Baby, come in and say hi. This is Luz. She cooked the meal. Hi. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, thank you, guys. I appreciate thank it. You. Thanks. Fritos. Fritos. Not Fritos. Got here at the golf cart. So this is Speedos. And this is our waiter. Hardy. Hardy. Nice to meet you, Hardy. Good deal. Thank you. And we are on the bay. It's gonna be a fun video to watch. Oh. Oh All right. oh. So, Sully and I have rented a cart again. Hi. Hi. We're headed to Secret Beach. Look at this road. And it is down a desolate, barren road. Oh. But it's an adventure. And I'm not sure, but I may end up buying this golf cart after I destroy it.
Here's the road. There goes a crane. This is a strong argument for purchasing a gimbal mount. basically a gyro mounted on a handle. Mm -hmm. No matter what you're doing, it keeps the camera stable. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I can understand what you're talking about with the boobs oh. now. Yeah, your boobs starting to hurt a little bit? They're bouncing. We were told your boobs will be sore at the end of this trip. I don't even have them, my mind hurt. Oh, it's oh. No. Swampy marshland. This is going to be annoying to watch. I'm trying to hold it as steady as possible, but it's just not. Not working for you? Not working for me. Huddle? Drop it's only waterproof when it's housing. You are the best. Pelican uh, beer. The blazing way to drink. Yeah, there's a puffer under here. Uh -huh. A puffer fish under there. Yeah. Oh, my little sand dollar. You'll get splinters in your backside. So we're here at the uh, headwaters. 
where we are going to take a boat ride to the Mayan ruins. And so far, we have traveled uh, about an hour and a half drive. Hi guys, how are you? So did they say how long the boat ride itself is going to be? Uh, they said we should be arriving there around 11.30. That's when we were going to have lunch. Okay. Ish. Ish. Island time? Island time. Although we're not on an island anymore. No. Central American time, I think, is ish, too. It all <laughs> meshes together. <laughs> oh, this place. Wow. So what do you think, baby? It's going to be fun. So far, pretty interesting? Very interesting. They are you, orange. Yeah. Why don't you tell the viewers at home what time you woke up this morning? I woke up at 2 a.m. And why? Because I couldn't sleep and I was tossing and turning and I thought I would not wake up in time. We had to wake up at what time? 4.30. So you woke up two hours early? Yes. Two and a half hours early. That's my wife, ladies and gentlemen, overachiever. <laughs> but reliable. <laughs> and here come the rest of our contestants. Camera shy. <laughs> Chris and Sarah, who are also staying on the island. Sarah is a good. Sarah's no, you're you're part of the subject material, man. Oh really? Yeah. This is uh, so we can document all this. I was just telling the camera what a great bartender your wife is. There she goes. All right, folks. This is the GoPro shot of the day. <laughs> You guys ever did the guided tour thing and there's always one guy who's really obnoxious that, <laughs> that tourist with the camera around his neck, you know? And his wife is with him the whole time going like that. <laughs> I'm that guy. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Morning. This is your captain speaking. It's time for an unbelievable experience. Oh, boy. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, my name is Nate. I'll be your tour guide and boat captain for today. Today we visit a very beautiful and famous Maya city known as Lamanai. That place is located 25 miles away. The boat ride to Lamanai is gonna take about an hour and it's gonna be like a roller coaster ride. Yes! It's gonna be like what you see in the James Bond movies. <laughs> the boat is gonna move fast most of the time, so please hold on to your hats. Please remain seated and keep your hands in the boat. I should stop every now and then to point out different things on the way, like birds and crocodiles. I don't promise anything, but who knows what is on the river. Mm -hmm. Have your phone, have your camera ready. Some of the things I will show you will pose, and then some of it won't stay for the picture. <laughs> so be flexible. I invite you to become friends. I invite you to become my friends. I want to become your friends. I want to treat you like I treat my family. I really want you to forget your worries, forget your problems, forget any kind of stress you may have had, and Give me the opportunity today to share a piece of my culture, a piece of my history, a piece of my country. So, can we begin? Outstanding. Let us begin. Nice. Well said. The name of the river is the New River. Right? All fresh water. You might laugh at what I will tell you right now. Next to this rum factory, what you see in front of the boat is a rehabilitation center <laughs> for alcoholics. Really? Is that true? I am being honest. <laughs> this rehabilitation center is not a cheap one. It's not used by locals. It's only used by wealthy foreigners. Look in front, there is a monkey on a tree on the left side of the river. In front, left side, front. there's a monkey on the left side. A little bit low on the ground. On the oh ground. yeah, I see it. Yeah. It's coming up. It's it? coming up on the tree. There you go. Spotted it. There you go. Ah, that's the guy that is coming for the north is the bottom field. He's gonna steal your camera, white. babe. Probably. Notice the white on the belly. Uh -huh. It's known as a spider monkey. He's coming for the camera. Yeah, he's coming for the camera. Yeah. <laughs> he's coming for everything. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, that was Ladies and the boat. No, it's a spider. Why don't you go back? Oh, and 
the front? Right there. Okay. Perfect. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. There you go. <laughs> He's a regular part of this tour. <laughs> he loves oh, okay. tourists. Look at it. Tail wrapped around. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got? <laughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, I'm laughing with you. <laughs> Good seeing you. There's a big tree you are about to pass on the right. This is a guanacaste tree like the one we saw with the stronger pig. This is the biggest one we'll see today. Believe it or not, this thing is about 60 years old. Jeez, that's fast. It grows fast. It's the kind of tree the Maya would prefer to cut to make a canoe. The Maya did not build sailing boats. What they made were dug out canoes from one big tree trunk like that. Wow. You know why? They also built here, what's the main reason they built here? Mm -hmm. The water from the lagoon. That water is all fresh. And the Maya <laughs> used it for drinking, <laughs> washing, bathing, cooking, and also agriculture, aquaculture, and most importantly, they used it for trading. The Maya people called the river Zul Lunikub. I love that name. You know what that Maya name means? Listen, Zul Lunikub means river of strange faces. Look at how many strange faces come on the, came on the river with me today. <laughs> True. Take a look at the sign on the right. Look at the tree trunk behind it. Try to make the connection. If you touch this thing, it gives you pain. Huh. A bad pain. You need a knife, you feel the bark, take the resin, put it there, and it will take away the pain. Give and take. Huh. From personal story, that's a big lie. It doesn't take away the pain, it only <laughs> gives you the pain. I'll ask this friend 
What is the meaning of the word escoba? Broom. A broom. The local people take the leaf of this, tie one bunch to one stick, and then we make la escoba, which is broom. Hmm. Friends, if you came here three months ago, there was a lot more canopy, a lot more greenery. Hurricane Earl passed here, Agassi third, and took away 50% of the forest canopy. Wow. wow. Later on, you'll see a lot more. Every day from then, they have been cleaning. The job was not over yet. Wow. 50% is gone. Yes. Back then, friends, you looked up and never saw the canopy, never saw the, the, the sky. Now you look up and when it's sunny, man, you really have to find sheet. Back then, you had to find the sun. Wow. wow. How often do you guys get hurricanes? I am 35 years old. I live 20 miles away from here on a straight line. What, what was felt here was not felt where I live. I have never seen a hurricane. Wow. That hurricane passed right here only. And That's they nice. felt a 100 mile wind gust right here. Where I live, 20 miles away, nada, nothing. Wow. wow. It's unbelievable, friends. It's like a laser beam. Now let me tell you what you're seeing. You're seeing a replica of fiberglass. The original face is just two feet behind it. The original face was covered up in 2009. Before that, every time we got the rain, the original face used to get wet. Every time somebody touched it, they used to leave chemicals on it. And because it is made of what kind of stone? Limestone. Limestone doesn't do good with chemicals and the rain. So to prevent erosion, they made a mold. And from the mold, they made the replicas. The replica was placed two feet in front. And then the space behind it was filled with special dirt. That way, they're preserving the face. Mm -hmm. Now, here is the thing. That face on the right side is not Maya, nor the face on the left side. None of these faces are Maya. What are these faces? Olmec. Who are the Olmec? The people that lived before the Maya. Where did they come from? They came from a place in Mexico called La Venta. Nobody knows why the Maya people made these faces. There are only a few Maya sites that have Olmec faces that size in that condition. And because this is one of them, automatically this becomes the most popular temple of Ramana. What are the only characteristics? The face is round, it has swelled eyes, it has a big nose. Yeah, I guess. I know. Slick. <clears throat> God, he's walked on this before us, you know. Okay. Ready? I'm ready. Just like the incline. Just like the incline. Gonna wait for everybody to leave and we can join the Mayan High Club.
them, take a look under the trees there. You see a really long building under the trees. Look towards that area, you see a couple more barely visible. You can't see them, but there's more on that side too. This is the main plaza, Dong Tong Lamanai. This temple is the highest one here at Lamanai. It stands 33 meters above the plaza floor. 33 meters is like 10 stories high. What you see was built 100 years BC. This one is solid. Look at the middle stairway, left and right. What you see on the sides are faces which represented the rain god Cha'at. This temple was used as a multi-purpose structure. On the top and the middle are colleges found bones of birds indicating the Maya people were sacrificing birds up there. Up there they found jade and obsidian. They actually found carvings on jade that show all my characteristics, just like the face we saw back there. And then the obsidian they found, friends, they, it included 5,000 blades and 2,000 big pieces of obsidian called cores. You put the blades and the cores together, it's 50 pounds to combined. That's a lot of volcanic material found here in the region. The Maya used the building as an observatory during the day and night. I wish you could be here on a clear night. Be up there on a night when there is no moon night. You see the stars like you can touch them sometimes. And I wish you could climb this right now. If it's not hazy, you'd be able to see like 30 miles in every direction. All right, so I would like you to come stand and see the way the building was constructed and how it got remodeled. This is 100 BC, friends. Wow. 13 faces. Wow. Three stairways. 100 BC to 600 AD. It looked like this. <laughs> and then. I'm ready, Freddy. <clears throat> They're not very slippery, at least. They're not? No. Kidding me, this is amazing. Okay, stop right there. We're going to amazing Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You better believe it, it's believe it. <laughs> <laughs> rubber ball from the sap of the rubber tree mm -hmm. they played it in a place like this that has walls that go, are slanted or go vertical but here is the thing nobody knows the rules of the game <laughs> the ball courts vary in size some ball courts have walls that are vertical some of them have it slanted some ball courts have hoops on the walls this one did not have it now when the Spaniards came to Chichen Itza, they saw that at the end of the game, somebody got sacrificed. Oh. We don't know who that person was. We don't know when somebody got sacrificed. Mm -hmm. But here is something really interesting. The ball was heavy. They were not allowed to use their head, nor their hands, nor their feet because it was heavy. They used to hit the ball with the shoulder, the elbow, the waist, the thighs, and their knees. Now, that's the only thing we know. What makes this ball court so special is what they found hidden under the wrong stone you have in the middle. That stone is concave. Under that, the Maya hid a ceramic vessel which had a cover, it had a lid. When the archaeologists opened it, inside they found two smaller containers. One had liquid mercury. And the other one had something red known as cinnabar. Cinnabar is a volcanic material which you need to heat up to do liquid mercury. That process can kill the people that is making yeah. it. Yet the Maya people did it. 
how they did it, why they did it, and why they put it there, nobody knows. And nobody knows how they brought the mercury, where is it found? Liquid mercury occurs naturally around volcanoes. Belize doesn't have volcanoes. If you want to do liquid mercury, you need a volcanic yeah, material yeah. called cinnabar. We don't have volcanoes. Where are the volcanoes? In, in the highlands of Guatemala. Yeah. Just like how obsidian and jade were found the up there, what they found here came from the same place. Wow. Think about that for the rest of the day. Right. Mm -hmm. It is the closest to what the lady here is That's a secret I leave you, all right? Whenever you go see another Maya city, if your tour guide don't let, let you see the head from the side, on your own, you move to the side, and I'll bet you the view you will get from the side is always better. 